Okay, so in my last video, uh, I gave an intro to AngularJS and developing a single page application with it. I'm going to throw a link here in the, in the description and probably an annotation somewhere around here. Uh, if you're not on mobile, you'll see that. And so in this one, we're going to get into Angular's most confusing yet most powerful feature, and that is directives. Lots of people, directives are kind of a black box to them. They're like, I kind of see it, but it seems kind of confusing. So we're going to just kind of, this is a lesson all to its own, because directives are quite a, quite a bit of stuff. But at the end of the day, you're going to find out they're not that confusing. So let me kind of give you the premise of where it comes from. Let's say we've got this controller here and we're just kind of importing friends. We got our friends list here and our friends JSON. So this is our friends uh, HTML templating thing. So let's say for each friend we wanted to, you know, just start adding some stuff. Yeah, we're going to add our friend first name, friend last name. What else do we have in here? Friend age and tweets. Let's go span. There we go. So now we've kind of got that. Um, and it's in an ng repeat. Uh, but let's say we want to break this out into something more reusable that we don't have to... It's reusable now because it's in an ng repeat, but say we're going to use this thing all over the place. Might not be used in an ng repeat. If I click on this friend, then I want to reuse all the same code there just for the individual person. Uh, what's actually going to make more sense is to make a directive in a lot of ways. Um, or you can do an ng include template, but in this case, we'll just use a directive. So we're going to make a directive called contact card. Um, and so what I've done is I've de de defined an HTML5 element. Some of you guys really don't like calling things that. So what you can do is you can just do a div. Like if you're not building a dedicated HTML5 app, you can do a div with an attribute of contact card. And that will also work. Or if, that, if you guys are still wanting to be more compliant, you can do data contact card um, and support official HTML5 data types. Since I like for it to feel cool, I'm going to call it contact card there and we're going to move on. And now you see we have nothing. So let's go ahead and create our contact card directive. I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to call this one app.directives contact card. This is just my module name. This could be whatever you want. It has no dependencies. I'm going to go ahead and save you. It's directives. So now I've got my directives contact card. Let's go ahead and add that to my build. Where are all those things coming in? Right here. Add that to all my JavaScript build. However you get it on the page is up to you. Okay, so now it's in there. And in my app, I'm going to add this as a dependency. Uh, for my app loading up. And what did I call that? I call that app.directives.contactCard. There we go. So now it's going to require that to be loaded before the app boots up. And everything's still good. Don't think I have JavaScript errors. Nope, we're good. All right, sweet. So let's go ahead and build out this directive. So when we have added contact card, it is going to start looking for a directive called contact card except for it won't be looking for it hyphen space. They'll be looking for it camel space. So I'm going to go dot directive. And I'm going to call it contact card like that. So what Angular is going to do is it's automatically smart enough to translate it from the hyphenated version to the camel cased version. So I'm creating directive contact card. And then I'm doing a function, which is dependency injected. So if I want to have this require any services or whatever, this is a dependency injected function. You know, I can require my friend's service, uh, which I did from my previous video. Uh, you know, I can require scope, any of that stuff. Actually, can't, there's really no scope needed at this point. Um, and what we're going to return is an object. And that object is our directive. Uh, the first thing we're going to get into is let's go restrict E. So that way this thing can only be instantiated by using an element. That's if I did restrict E, that's this. If I did restrict A, that's attribute. That's when I did div um, contact card. That will also work on data contact card. So that's kind of 
what the restrict is about. Uh, that's just so you can, you know, it's more or less for self-documenting purposes. Um, I'm only going to call this thing as an element or as an attribute, so you kind of know what to look for in your code. I'm just going to say restrict to E since I'm calling it as E here. Let's go on to our next thing, and I'm going to go straight to controller. Controller is also dependency injected. You can add whatever you want in here. I can add in my scope, um, and I'm just going to have this thing do a alert. So we know that this thing's firing. There you go, it alerts controller. So we know that the controller is firing, it fired twice because I'm doing an injury repeat for my two friends. So the controller is already active. I can have this do a console log of um, controller. There you go, so it logged twice. So our controller is working, it's linking, it's firing. If you're not getting that to work, either this name is not matching this name here, um, you're not defining it in the right way that it's restricting to, or possibly you'll get an error here if you've not included the directive JavaScript on the page. And the common thing that I do all the time is I forget to add my module my directive module as a dependency. So it's loading, but it's not loading in time, uh, or it's not requiring it to load before it goes and processes this templating. That's usually the mistake that I make, is I go ahead, I, I add the JavaScript file, I add the directive file, uh, but I forget to make it a dependency. So you don't get any errors at that point, because it's just saying, hey, we don't know what contact card is, move on. Um, so just make sure that you've added it in your app dependency, whatever your module name is, which is right there. So just figured I'd reiterate that. That's the kind of thing I did about 20 times when I was first making directives because you just don't get an error about it. It takes you a while to figure out what's going on. So let's say I want to pass some information into this directive. Um, how am I going to do that? Uh, the biggest way you'll do that is through attributes. I'm going to say data equals, and I can pass it in any kind of anything. In this case, I'll just call it friend, which is coming from up here. So it's basically taking anything from my current scope and it's passing it in through an attribute and now we can access this through scope and the scope object. I can grab um, data is and I do equal and that is going to look for an attribute called data. So that's going to say data is equal and I can go grab data. So now scope data in my controller I can go will be my friend for each person. Let me just refollow that again, just in case it, it, I didn't explain it super well. I'm passing in the friend object to the data attribute. Data is looking for the data attribute. Let's say I wanted this to be called something else, um, my data, but I still want it to look to the data attribute. I can do that, and uh, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? I don't know. I usually keep it named the same thing, honestly, because it just gets really confusing. Honestly, if I was doing this, I would call it friend. And then I would call this thing friend because it really helps to keep the naming conventions always the same. You'll get stuff really confused all the time. Oh, that's what it is. I'm console logging scope data. I did it right. My data. Data. Back to example number one. So I'm still calling it data here. Now I'm going to call it my data in here for whatever reason because I want to confuse myself and everybody watching and it still works. So bad way to do it, but that's kind of how you can finagle with this stuff. I'm going to, for the sake of simplicity, call it friend and I'm going to call it friend. And we're just going to keep everything similar. Okay, and there's a couple things. Equals means it's the binding is going both ways. Um, and there's some other binding characters you can pass in instead of equals. Uh, you can make the binding just go one way, or you can make the binding go two ways. You can look at the Angular docs for that. Uh, the majority of the time, you're just going to want to go equals, so that way if you go changing your friend here, it's going to fly back up the chain, and it's going to change it in the controller uh, for your home controller. Usually that's what you want to do. You want it to always be bound both ways still. So. So there's my controller. Now I can add my own template. And I can go h1 friend.firstname. Uh, 
want to make sure I have my comma. There you go. So now I've got my own templating going on. That's really, we're going to want to use a template URL, just like we do for everything else. So I will go templates, um, directives, and then this was, what is this contact card? Contact card.html. Let's go make that directives. Contact card HTML. So now I can take that templating that I had. I think I already erased it, didn't I? Yep. Okay, well, so we'll just go H1. And now we're working again. So now I've kind of got this is my directive that matches up to my actual directive JS. So now I can start building my reusable code. We've kind of gone through the whole steps that we need to take. So now this thing is completely reusable. I've got my directive. It's going through the controller. Uh, let me kind of show you some other things. And now my HTML looks super clean and actually it's super, it really makes a lot of sense actually. One thing that I like about if you're using an HTML5 only app, uh, being able to define stuff like this really kind of makes it really clear and self-documenting. You know exactly what's going on. So. That's kind of how that works. Let's go and go through some options that we can use here. So let's say we want to add some HTML into our directive declaration. Uh, let's say I want to add my own H1 and even do some scoping stuff here. Um, you'll notice that doesn't show up. If I had hyphens or whatever, nothing's showing up because by default, anything in this directive gets completely deleted. So if you want to pull that in, then you use the transclude true flag. And it still doesn't get pulled in because it doesn't know where to transclude it because you already have your template. So what you're going to do in your template is you're going to add any kind of element and you're going to add the ng transclude attribute. And there you go. Now, before my friend name gets printed, and I'll change this to H2. Uh, now, before my friend name gets printed, it's going to transclude. So I can put this at the bottom, and that automatically gets put below now every time. So that's kind of where that comes in. Uh, if you want to be able to custom tweak some part of your contact card every time you declare it, that's how you would do that. Another way you can add custom tweaking is uh, you can add your own attributes. Uh, let's, let's say that H1 won't always be called contact card. I can make sure that title's called contact there. And let's just, that'll be called title. And then I'm going to pull in title as well here. So now scope.title is going to be called, and I need to make sure that this is in a sh defined as a string. There we go. Because uh, you'll notice all these attributes are getting looked at as evaluated objects. So this isn't a string of friend anymore. It's looking for an object called friend. So this did not work at first because it was looking for an object, object called capital C contact. Uh, so I have to make sure I wrap it in string quotes. And so now I can instantiate it with a different title every time, um, real time, or I can pass it in, you know, an object. So that's kind of where that comes in. Let's go back to my directive. So we've got our restrict, we've got our scope. This is how we pull stuff in based off of attributes. We got our transclude equals true. That's if we want to pull some stuff in. I don't really need that anymore. We've got a replace option. Let's go look at the DOM element that's getting created here. You'll notice our DOM element is still called contact card. I don't really want that. I want to call this thing, I, I want to make sure that this stays as a div, keep it a little bit more compliant. You can go replace true and this will fail. Should give me an error now. Yeah, it's going to give me an error right now because you have to have at least one root element if you're going to do this. So I'm going to go to my contact card HTML. And I'm going to make sure I wrap everything in a div. And so now, instead of contact card being the element for that, 
it's going to be called div. There we go. So now if I inspect this over here, now instead of my element being called contact card, it's called div. So I usually do that just kind of as a safe measure. Um, and that way I can still use my HTML5 elements as much as I want uh, for clarity. Uh, and then they'll get substituted out for a more compliant div. So that's something I'll do. I'll kind of always use replace. And then honestly, this is about as complicated as stuff gets. Once again, this controller is dependency injected, so you can insert anything you want to. You can uh, do an interval. So you can pull in any of your dependency injected values and that'll all work. This is dependency injected as well. Um, and let's do the link function. And that's probably about all you need to know to write a whole lot of directives. Uh, there's also a compile function, which you probably won't need to know unless you're doing some complicated stuff. Let's say that we wanted to do some stuff to this DOM element. We wanted to bind and listen to DOM events. At that point, we'd add a link function. Now, link function is not dependency injected. You're going to get three. Um, you're going to get three arguments here. You're going to get the scope. So a common thing is to not add a dollar sign there. So you know that this is actually just getting passed as the first argument all the time. You're not dependency injecting it. The second one is elements, and the third one is attributes. So if I go here, I'm always going to get uh, the scope. I'm going to get my jQuery element. If you're running jQuery, it's automatically going to be wrapped as a jQuery element. Uh, if not, you're going to be getting the jQuery Lite Angular version uh, and then the attributes. So what you can do here is I can go make sure I have this. So now whenever I click my elements, it's going to alert click. And so that's kind of if you want to make your directive do some smart stuff that's going to be where you do that um, you can also get the id of your elements that way if you're not using jquery it passes you your attributes um, so i can automatically get my attribute id attribute from here which is not defined uh, i'll just make this the index since we're doing an ng repeat And that's always calling an index because uh, it's a directive. And don't exactly remember how to do that. I haven't done it in a while. But uh, that's pretty much it. That's how you use a link uh, if you need to do any DOM manipulation. So hopefully that helps you understand directives. Let's kind of recap real quick. Uh, restrict. This is for how you're pulling it in. Scope. This is for where stuff's coming from. Uh, this is how you get all your data in. These can be objects. These can be values you define real time with strings. Uh, they can be as complicated as you want them to be. And then controller, you're defining your own controller here. Uh, you could give this its own controller name, or it's usually you'll want to define the controller right here, pull your templating URL. That's about it. Directives are not really that complicated once you get past building your first one or two. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and have a great day.